Hello, welcome to a video on the Enter Record screen for ProLedger Online. In this video, we're going to talk about how to make bookkeeping entries and how to edit those entries. We're also going to talk about automation and defaults, which will make entries go quicker and easier. And we're going to talk about split versus multiple entries. And, and just as a little introduction, split entries are situations, for example, you have a car and you're using that car 80% of the time for business and 20% of the time for personal. So when you have an entry for a gas receipt, you can have the program split that receipt in that ratio for you between personal and business. So you're going to see how that works. And also multiple entries now are situations where you have a receipt or an invoice uh, that has multiple items on it and you want to make multiple entries on a single entry. So that is the other topic in this video. So let's get started. Okay, you're looking at the main screen. Uh, we can go to dashboard or records and you're gonna see this pink button on the top left called add records. So to make a bookkeeping entry, choose add record. And when you're here, you just fill out the prompts on the left and then the entry will populate on the right. So it's really gonna be that simple. Let's just go field by field just to give you some detail here. At the very top, you're gonna to see where it says required items with a little asterisk. So you're gonna notice categories, account, and amount have a little asterisk there. That means you better have something in there as well as class, otherwise the entry won't submit and it will flag you. But anyway, let's go through the, uh, the prompts. At the top left, if you want, you can choose the, the rec field and you can say yes there you know there's no receipt for example um or there's you're entering this as foreign currency or the reconciliation is being done and we're, we have different videos on some of this stuff but basically if you have a, a paper receipt and as well as a bank statement in front of you and you're reconciling them you can choose done uh, or you can choose one of the other options or in many cases, you can just leave that for the time being and do those things later and choose to just leave it at select. Going to the right, you just simply enter in the date by selecting it and just click outside the box when you've selected the date you want. And if this is going to be an entry that's repeating, you know, let's say you had a monthly expense or a monthly revenue and you wanted to set this up as a repetitive entry, you could do that here. So you can just simply choose a date add it with a plus sign and on, then we choose another date let's say for the next month add it with a plus sign and you'll see a whole row of whatever entries are, are being repeated and you might want to set up a year at a time doing this and it just speeds up the process uh, and there's a video on this as well how to handle repeating entries properly but this gives you a bit of an introduction let's get rid of those by hitting the trash can and close and now moving down to the next row you can choose the type of transaction. So is it an expense, cost of goods sold, is it income, or is it a transfer, or which means it's, is it a movement of money between accounts? And there's also a transfer video you can watch on how to handle those. But anyway, we're gonna enter in, uh, let's say an, an income, then you're gonna see only the income categories will appear in the category list. And then if you have expense, then you're only gonna see the expense categories. And in the category list, you're going to see two types. You're going to see some that are in bolded, like this one, in automotive expenses. Uh, that means that that's a main category name. And then underneath, you could have subcategories, which would be uh, in the lighter font. And you can make an entry using any main category or subcategory name on this list. And if there's no lighter items underneath, that means there's no subcategories, right? So anyway, let's do an entry for online uh, or, you know, let's say print and direct mail. Uh, now, we can then go to the right and choose, is it, you know, a general expense for business? Is it um, a split entry? You mean between, there's a split between personal and business at a certain ratio? Uh, or is it a personal item? Now, you can keep track of all your personal stuff as well as your business stuff with this program. So, you have the option for that. And if you have the expanded version, you're going to have the ability to have more items on this class list and you can choose a project or a customer or a property and attach the entry to that. Let's just say this is going to be a general expense for business. 
And I'm, in this example, I'm using the uh, setup for real estate agents as the, that's why it's saying general agent there. But if you choose a file type that's small business, it'll just say small, it'll just say business expense here. Anyway, we're going to go down and you've, ch you've chosen these items. Now the account, uh, you can choose which account uh, is the money coming from to pay this expense. And you just simply choose it here. Now, if you're going to pay it later and you simply charged it, then the money hasn't flowed yet. You would choose payable. And uh, but in this example, let's say we used our Visa card. You can write in a description. And let's say, uh, you know, what we like to do in descriptions is write in a, a vendor name. Um, you know, let's just say it's, a, you know, the local paper name. You know, I don't know what the name is. Let's just say that, you know, we're going to call it local paper name. Uh, for the name of the vendor is a good good way to do it. So if you're going to go, uh, then you can enter in the invoice number or something descriptive. And later, if you enter in, let's say, a vendor or a customer name followed by the, a descriptive invoice number, then later it becomes really easy using the search feature in the program to run reports on vendors and customers or an invoice number. Um, now, if you want something to be... Um, uh, saved in terms of your description so that next time you choose print and direct mail this particular description comes up for you on a drop down list you can choose add and so this becomes part of a pre-written description list when you would choose add if you don't want this to be it's kind of a, if this is a one-off and you don't want it to be part of a pre-written description list for this particular category then just to, just don't choose add just tab to the next field. Now we're going to put in our amount. Let's say it's $120. You always put the amount in, including tax. And you see on the right, it's saying 120 and then it's deducting the taxes and bringing it down to the net amount. Now, if there's only one tax, you can just simply deselect. Okay. Or if there's two taxes on the invoice, then choose them both. Now, if you, um, need to put in a custom value in the tax field, sometimes it doesn't quite calculate correct, out correctly, then you can simply enter in the amount manually. And then you see here on the right side, it's now $8. And that's how that, uh, that manual entry works. And down here, you can attach a PDF or any image file to the bookkeeping entry and it attaches to the bookkeeping entry here and then next time you can go back and view those attachments and uh, this helps you keep a paperless bookkeeping system okay so we've got all the fields populated and on the right side you can see the description of the entry you can see um, you know basically the total and the taxes and the net now if you wanted to if you had an invoice with multiple items on it you can now add another item to this entry so let's say you you had this local paper advertising, but you also had another thing on that same invoice. You could continue to make entries. Let's say it was a sign. Oh, I bought a sign from that company on the same invoice. Let's say the sign was $28. And now you see on the right side, you have print and direct mail of 106. You have signs and photos of 2478, uh, you know, after tax. And so you can see how this is uh, continuing to one above the other, and then it adds up, up on the bottom. And you, again, you can add a third one. And you can continue to add as many um, entries based on that invoice as you like. And at the bottom, you can see the overall total. If you want to get rid of one of these items, just choose an X. So once you got the entry the way you like it, uh, you can just simply choose Submit. And it'll just cycle for a couple of seconds and it'll submit to your, there we go. And it adds it to the, uh, to the records. So here you are, you have uh, your list of bookkeeping entries and you can scroll through them, you know, and you can display 10 or 25 at a time uh, like that. So that's really all there's to it in terms of making an entry. If you want to edit an entry, you can double click on it. And you just simply make whatever change you would like to any of the fields, press save, and then you're done. And you can just simply scroll through the records to view them here at the bottom. The other thing I'll mention is if you see a paper clip like that on the left side, that, that means that that entry has a, uh, a file attachment and you can just click on it 
and you can see the invoice or the, the image that it has there. Um, and again, if you want to search the entry, you can just type in your search term. And let's say we want to look at everything to do with Parker. You just type and you'll see all the entries to do with Parker. So anyway, that's kind of how you search for entries. That's how you make them. That's how you edit them. And then in the setup screen, you can go through and uh, to speed up the entry, you can change the defaults. Okay, when I choose online promo and website, what is the split going to be if I choose the split class when I'm making entry? What is the default account that I normally would use to pay my online promo and website expenses? I can choose it there. Or if I normally choose my MasterCard, I can choose that. That way the entry will populate with this, but you can still edit it if it was something different. Um, and if it's normally, you know, not a split item, but a, a general expense item or a personal item, I can default it there. And I can even default it. Is there usually one tax or two taxes on that invoice? And so for each of these um, expenses in the uh, setup screen, you see, I have the ability to choose all my defaults. So then later, you know, when I'm actually making an entry and I choose a particular category, you see how this is now chosen MasterCard is my default. It's chosen general agent, you know, and it's chosen one tax at the bottom. So all I have to do at that point is enter in a description. And if you, you know, got it pre-written, you can just simply choose it and then add to it, you know, an invoice number and um, and make any change if you want. If it isn't MasterCard but Visa, you can still edit it and you're done. And you know, the entries can happen very quickly if you take the time to go into the setup screen and look at these particular setup options that you have here. So anyway, there's a few tools for you on making entries. I hope you found this video helpful.